Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. It's time to have a look at the first step blog for the next season of the Battle Pass. Looks like it's going to be the USS Flagstaff, which is going to be a Rank 3 Premium US Motor Gunboat. It is a hydrofoil, very similar to the Tukumkari, which is already in the game, apart from the fact it has a weird turret on it, and also looks pretty fun. The vehicle itself will house some quite nice uh, weaponry, and it'll be interesting to see how it actually works in the game and what it gets access to, and at least give something slightly different from the norm at those general BRs. Looks also like the leaks were true, so we can look forward to the good old Swedish Tiger and also the P-51 coming pretty soon. Let's get into the history of the Flagstaff. The USS Flagstaff was one of two experimental hydrofoils that the US Navy ordered to study the design's feasibility in the late 60s. These boats received the PGH name, Patrol Gunboat Hydrofoil. Both boats were designed by aeronautical engineering companies, the PGH-1 Flagstaff by Grumman and the PGH-2 Tukumkari by Boeing. Soon after they were put into service, both went to South Vietnam. However, not long as the repair and also maintenance of them in the field turned out to be too difficult. After a period of service with the Pacific Fleet, the USS Flagstaff was leased to the US Coast Guard as there was a request for a speedboat to combat maritime drug trafficking. Here, the boat did not take route for similar reasons as maintaining a hydrofoil boat turned out to be too expensive and also technically difficult. In 1978, the USS Flagstaff returned to the fleet and was soon dismantled for metal, and the idea of mass construction of hydrofoil boats was recognised as untenable. Luckily in War Thunder, we don't have to worry about maintenance, so that won't be a huge issue for this machine. Instead, we can just see it in its best setup, which is always really nice and a cool thing about the game. The USS Flagstaff will come in at a very similar BR to a lot of other very powerful American coastal boats, which sometimes get overshadowed by destroyers, but in their area are still very good. There's a bunch of PT boats around 3.0, which are fantastic and very fun to play. There is also, of course, the Candid, which is there, and the Tukumkari, which is the brother, kind of, of the Flagstaff. I think the Flagstaff will be more useful than the Tukumkari, though, uh, since the Tukumkari, even though it's a little bit smaller and technically uh, should be a little bit harder to hit, it's still huge, so it's easy to mash it up. The Flagstaff, compared to the Tukumkari, uh, should be um, pretty fast, uh, going at 120 kilometers an hour in arcade battles, or 94 kilometers an hour in realistic battles. It should be slightly heavier um, in uh, than the Tukumkari, so a little bit less maneuverable. Uh, but it has a really interesting set of order of, of uh, munitions or armament, I should say. So first of all, it has an interchangeable set of armament. You don't really see this too much. Um, especially since the armament here is completely different uh, from each other. I thought we would see like a standard tech tree version and then a premium version, but instead they're just throwing it both into one. So the flagstaff on the front of it, you can either get access to a 40mm Bofors, which is, you know, kind of the standard one that you'll see at the time, which uh, is similar to what the Tukumkari has, or a Sheridan turret, which has been modified for naval use. Now, the Sheridan turret has a 152mm cannon on it, meaning that it uh, will actually pack a hell of a punch. They do actually say for the 152, it will fire only high explosive, or at least it says it fires high explosive rounds, where the first hit will likely be fatal to a boat or cause serious damage to a destroyer. It would be nice if you could use the Shillelagh, which is the ATGM of the Sheridan, and also the Heat, so you could actually penetrate stuff like destroyers and take them out. One of the things I thought with this vehicle you could do is you could use it as a vehicle which goes to those middle uh, kind of caps or, you know, the larger caps which are designed for destroyers and cruisers very quickly with the speed and then cap it and then use the Sheridan gun to be able to try and stop people coming in. But... The problem with this 
is um, if it doesn't, you know, get its correct ammunition, like the heat or the AT gem, and it only gets the HE, it's not really going to be able to do a ton of damage. And on top of this as well, something that I've noticed uh, with these smaller machines and also the Tukumkari is nowadays, especially on those types of points, if you get on a lot of maps, you will bounce all over the place in the sea. It's one of the things that is the most annoying in naval battles for coastal stuff right now, where there are many weather conditions which do not suit these machines. And if you are using something like the Sheridan turret, which if you look at where it's mounted, it won't be able to really gun depress very well, especially when the arc of the um, boat is forward, since in if it's in its hydrofall setup, you won't really be able to get a good arc of fire, but also the gun might just bounce around all over the place if they decide not to give it its stabilizer, which would be a pain. And this is something that's happened with a lot of coastal vehicles. I wish, I really wish they would just relax the weather settings for coastal, so you could actually have a bit of fun with it. But yeah, it is at least nice to have the different options and different setups. But for me, that is actually the limiting factor. It's not the fact that, you know, this vehicle has different stuff. It's it's basically just that. Now, the 50 cows that it has as a secondary are quite nice. It has two dual sets of 50 cows. These will basically just be AA supports. You know, they're not really going to do too much. Uh, just provide additional firepower against coastal machines or, you know, uh, aircraft which are coming in. I feel like uh, this one won't have to deal with aircraft too much uh, because of the fact it would probably be used as a first spawn to quickly cap a few places. And if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. And then you uh, you just move on to uh, maybe using larger things. There's also another gun on this thing. It has an 81 millimeter mortar on the back. But once again, just like the front gun, it doesn't exactly have the greatest firing angles. Uh, so we'll have to see how that ends up coming out. I'm not entirely sure that will be useful um, because it can only really shoot behind it, at least it gets a better angle in the hydrofoil setup. But yeah, there, there's a few hydrofoils in the game in War Thunder. They're pretty cool. Some of them have been busted in the past and even depending on matchmaking are now. PGO2, obviously the Spaviero, uh, which turns up. I don't think this one will be one of those, even though it's fast, even though, you know, it has like the Sheridan turrets, it will only be able to fire every once in a while. Now, obviously, it'll be able to overpressure stuff, so you'll be able to donk something and then be done with it. But at the same time, like the, the angle of fire is not good and uh, it will not be survivable at all, which is one of the problems that Tukumkari has. I really like that 3033 area for the US, though. The Candid's really fun. Um, it isn't as survivable as it was last update, but, you know, it was still really, really survivable previously. And also, at the same time, the PT boats are just a lot of fun. And uh, you can actually run it for events have a great time with it and you know it can work really well and a lot of time you don't have to run into destroyers or if you do run into destroyers they're usually the lower uh, br ones which is quite nice so for me um the flagstaff is a pretty decent pick i don't know if i would take it over a few of the other vehicles uh, in that lineup but it really depends on the firing angle of the sheridan's turret and also how much damage it can do they also confirmed that the next Battle Pass is coming out on the 24th of April, which shouldn't be too surprising since it's when the other one ends, but just to make sure and to clarify, that's when it turns up. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Tulio Ponticovo, Brendan Quinn, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Wartinder, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, B. Young, Alan Hacker, Ozzy Panzer, Liam Shear, Opium Prime, Lafouche, Cam Arslan, Uncle Bean, and Derek R. for supporting the channel.